Hi, I'm Carl Camera, and this is a video response to Molly Wood's Windows Phone Challenge, the verdict video that she posted after reviewing and testing out Windows Phone after two weeks. I, I want to say up front what my relationship with Microsoft is. I am not an employee of Microsoft. I, I think I'm a BizSpark member. I use the Microsoft stack, although primarily at work I don't. Um, I'm a software developer. And other than that, uh, I'm a Windows phone user and I enjoy it. I think it's a great phone for the vast majority of people out there. What I'd like to do is walk through the Windows Challenge video of Molly that she gave and provide my counter arguments or comments concerning what she's doing or what she's really saying as she l looks at this product uh, and telling whether it meets her needs or not. Molly, this is not meant to offend you in any way. All these comments are meant in jest. Uh, I, I want to just point out some of the perhaps inaccuracies or biases that aren't coming through in your commentary. Hi, I'm Molly Wood from CNET.com here with my final update on the Windows Phone 7 challenge. Hold it. Let's take a look at this. Molly Wood, executive editor at CNET, associated with CBS. Now, let's be very clear here. This challenge was a no strings attached offer to Molly. Uh, whether or not she specifically liked it better than her Android, whether it, so every opinion is just hers, but she starts off this response by saying and associating herself with CNET. So I'm expecting as a listener some journalistic in integrity, some thoroughness, and some follow-upness, if that's a word, ab about some of the things that she sees or has problems with. So let's continue on and, and, and follow along. Now, as you know, or maybe know, I've been using Windows Phone 7 Mango for two weeks now to see if I like it better than Android. Okay, two weeks. Obviously, she doesn't get through all of the different things. In fact, uh, the last the the first end of week one she pointed out that there was an entire day that she didn't use it at all so keep that in mind when she goes through this it's just been two weeks it's time to get to the verdict but before I get there I promised you an update on some of the services on this phone last week I focused mainly on getting it all set up getting to know the email so over the course of the two weeks, I've discovered a couple things. I mentioned that the two most important features to me were going to be speech to text, which is integrated throughout Android and which I use constantly, and also mapping, which I use constantly because I get lost a lot. Okay, basically, Molly uses a phone for every reason on earth other than making phone calls. So the two most important things to her are using it as a GPS, and as a text synthesizer for email creation. Now, I don't doubt that she uses these things a lot. I don't doubt she gets lost a lot. I just think that if she's going to use these credentials, that she is an executive editor at CBS, that she would acknowledge that perhaps less than 50% of us talk to our phones to create emails. Maybe less than 20% of us. Maybe less than, maybe like one-tenth of one percent of the people on the internet may have tried it once. Now if you read my latest blog update about Windows Phone 7, you know that I'm a little frustrated that speech-to-text is not integrated throughout the operating system. It's really only available for basic commands from the home screen and in texting. So I can't compose an entire email, for example, via speech to text. That's a bummer. Okay, and she's not upset here that it's not there. She's disappointed it's not everywhere. Again, 
I can understand speech to text. When texting, if you're in a car and you want to text or a text comes in, uh, Windows Phone will talk to you and say, I've got a new text from so-and-so. Do you want to reply? And then you say yes, and you talk to it, even over your Bluetooth earpiece, and it will synthesize a text and send that out to you. But she doesn't like the fact that she can't create an email with by talking to the phone. The bigger bummer, though, is the navigation. Look at the Molly Rance blog for more details on this, but the short version is that for some reason... For some reason. Keep that in mind. For some reason. Microsoft has put in this kind of faux turn-by-turn -turn direction thing. It has turn-by-turn -turn directions when you use Maps in Bing, but you can only get audible directions if you actually tap the phone screen to enable the next instruction. It doesn't just like read them out to you like every other mapping solution on earth. This is baffling and makes it, as far as I'm concerned, kind of unusable. Like you're using it when you're driving. You shouldn't have to look down, find the phone and tap the screen for the next direction. That makes no sense. Yeah, that does make no sense. But you know what else doesn't make sense? Finding something you don't understand and then as a journalist, not calling somebody or asking somebody about it, trying to understand why that might be the case. Oh, but you know, this is CBS and let's just say Molly's following in the footsteps of other noted CBS journalists that, you know, don't let facts say get in the way of a good story. Oh, and one more point I need to make here is that there are apps that she can download today that provide turn-by-turn -turn navigation instructions just as she wanted. But she doesn't seem to want or have any inclination to look for those apps. I did promise though that I would try out some of the services like Zoom Pass, which is a music subscription service that competes with Spotify, Pandora, services like that. And I have to say, Zoom Pass is fine. It's a very good streaming music service. Notice she uses streaming music service. Zune is awesome, especially with the Zune Pass that she's trying out. There's a 14-day free trial for Zune. Um, the Zune Pass allows you to gain access to the full catalog of Zune. I don't know how many millions of titles they've got for that. Uh, and then you get f f 10 uh, songs pretty much per per month. So for 15 bucks, you get 10 free songs. It's a, it's a no-brainer. If you have a, a Windows phone, you should really get it. It's great that you can download as many songs as you want while you're using it. I wish it had a slightly more integrated cloud solution the way that Google and Amazon do. All right, Molly, I really have a problem with this. You've already said that Zune is a streaming music service. And now you're trying to impose an Android paradigm on the Windows Phone, meaning you want all your phone, all your all your information up in the cloud. So I guess so that you can have access to any of your songs at any time. That's great, but it's not necessary with Zoom. Do you see the? the it's a streaming music service. So Windows Phone does have a cloud solution it's called zoom you if you're if something that you have at home isn't synced to your phone your zoom service still gets you access to it because you can just stream it down um you can i guess upload songs to your microsoft skydrive account skydrive is kind of their cloud service that lets you store documents photos music things like that this this whole discussion about wanting a cloud solution is moot the SkyDrive service is great. I mean, it's a nice cloud service, although the web interface is terrible and really requires Internet Explorer. But Okay, another, what's with the Internet Explorer dig here? Okay, you got IE9 on your phone. But I couldn't, and again, this might be me. I could literally not find a way to access my SkyDrive from the phone other than, I guess, by going to the browser. It is you, Molly. And, I mean, you admitted it. You get lost a lot which is weird. There just needs to be an app for that. 
There is a third party app that lets you access your documents and your music. Suddenly, she's discovered apps. Wow! The phone didn't do something that she wanted, and she found an app that did. She doesn't like the app, but what I, what I don't understand here is why the app was mentioned in one case, but not the other. That's, that, that's, that's baffling to me, Molly. But that's a little clunky and it feels insecure to me. So feels insecure. It feels insecure to me. Executive editor at CBS CNET. So I kind of want there to be a better cloud experience overall on this phone. All right, so what's the verdict? That sounded a little negative, I know. It sounded a little negative? <laughs> okay, yeah. But here is my ultimate decision about Windows Phone 7. There's nothing really wrong with it. I like it fine. I mean, I have to say, when it comes to Mango, it is easy to use, it's attractive. If you use a lot of Microsoft services, it's decently well integrated, as well integrated as anything from Microsoft is. How about if you make phone calls, you have a Facebook account, you want to communicate with friends in groups or individually, does she mention any of that? No. And I think that People who are looking for that nice, easy to use experience would be perfectly happy with this operating system. I think the biggest battle that Microsoft has to fight is that most people who are looking for an easy to use integrated experience are probably gonna buy an iPhone. Okay, well, there we go. We've got two phones, easy integrated, easy to use integrated experience. So she is now equating the usability of Windows Phone to iPhone, which is fine. I'll take that. And I can't give them a good reason not to. And as for me personally, I find that Android gives me a little more power and a little more flexibility and a little more of a sort of power user experience. So I guess if I had to say the final word on Windows Phone 7 Mango, it's kind of on the friendship ladder. Oh, friendship ladder. I like it, but I don't love it. It's not gonna be my next phone. Okay, I'm fine with that. Not going to be my next phone. Fine for folks who want a nice integrated experience. She doesn't really see a big product differentiator here because basically the two things that she wanted to use it for was GPS and text synthesis. Okay, the nice integrated features are in those areas that she ignored. Okay, Molly, I understand that your review is your take on it and how it came across during the two weeks that you had something really kind of pushes my buttons is to hear on Buzz Out Loud two weeks later you complain about how Android doesn't handle photo filters Instagram and that you're it's so ridiculous to have to start a new program to download to take pictures and then change something then add it to Facebook and you're all excited that the solution to the whole thing is Facebook when you had something like this in hand two weeks earlier all right all you do is start your camera take a picture of something Third-party extras are integrated into the phone. The one I like is Apict. Do your photo manipulation. And oh, look, there's a Facebook button here. I click Facebook. And then from the third party app, it integrates into Facebook, logs you in, lets you type something in, and off it goes. You had this. But did you mention this? Did you mention that this handles 
a, a something that a let's see you described yourself as a Facebook junkie is that right why was this overlooked in your review is kind of uh, an enigma to me so can you come clean on this thanks <laughs>